As they say in PIHL hockey, let's do that PIHL hockey. We are back trackside at the Ice Castle in Castle Shannon, Pennsylvania for game two of our doubleheader on PIHL Hockey Night Live on 10 Band TV, presented by Weight Loss Direct as the 2023 push for the Penguins Cup playoffs continues. Hello, good evening and welcome. I'm Matt Popchuk and we now shift our attention to Pennsylvania Interscholastic Hockey League Class AA where the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars off to our right are preparing for their regular season home ice finale against the visiting Hempfield Spartans. And both these teams are playoff bound of that much we are certain. What we don't know is where they'll end up in the final Class AA Penguins Cup playoff picture and who they will play. For head coach John Zeiler and the defending champion Jaguars, they can finish as high as third and they can move into fifth place tonight if they win. If they win out and Latrobe loses one of their remaining games, then the Jaguars will clinch home ice advantage in the opening round of the Penguins Cup playoffs. Hemfield can finish as high as seventh if they win tonight and win their last game against Franklin Regional and if Franklin Regional loses its last two games, Franklin Regional also plays Latrobe uh, in between those two matchups. Uh, both these teams heading in very different directions as well. Recently, the Jaguars had won five in a row. The Hempfield Spartans have lost five in a row since January 16th. Hempfield with a minus 19 goal differential in that span, but they do own a victory, a 7-4 decision over the Jaguars at the Kirk Nevin Arena from back on November the 21st. And in that game, Nick Bruno, the team's leading scorer and November PIHL Player of the Month, the senior All-Star absolutely went off. A seven-point night for Bruno in that big win over the Jaguars. And the Spartans, despite their struggles of late, can celebrate the probable coronation of Bruno as PIHL Class AA scoring champion. Bruno coming in with 29 goals and 35 assists for 64 points. That puts him comfortably ahead of both Tim Nalatov of Bishop McCourt, who has 46 points coming in tonight, and Wes Schwartzmiller of South Fayette, who comes in with 44 points overall. For Thomas Jefferson, their big gun, and certainly the last time these two teams met, this was the case, is Jake Stock. Stock leading the team offensively, wearing number 21 in white with 14 goals, 15 assists, and a team-high 29 points. He's one of the best power play specialists in PIHL Class AA with 10 power play points in all. He had a power play tally the last time these teams faced each other. He's got five points in his last three PIHL games overall, so he seems to be playing some of his best hockey at a good time for the Jaguars as they try to start a brand new winning streak just before the end of the regular camp campaign here. And in the Class AA overall standings, Thomas Jefferson currently sitting sixth with their 20 points coming from seven losses and 10 wins. Again, Thomas Jefferson 10 and seven, their overall record coming in tonight. Hemfield coming in with an overall record of seven wins, 10 losses, and one regulation tie. Hemfield with 15 points currently sits in the eighth and final playoff position. Again, both these teams are safely in the playoffs as they battle for positioning here tonight. If the season ended as I speak, Hemfield would go to the Belmont Complex to face Armstrong in round one. And TJ would head to the War Memorial to face the team that just beat them in that building, Bishop McCourt. And so this game still does have playoff implications for both sides as Corey Myers leads his Hemfield Spartans on the road here against Zyler's Jaguars. And we're gonna wait and see who gets the nod and goal for both teams. Chase Sankey with an all-star campaign for Hemfield coming in with over 443 minutes played. He's been sharing time with another senior, Blaze Becker who is actually top 10 in minutes played in Class AA with 475 of those. And Thomas Jefferson's been doing a bit of a revolving door with their goaltenders as well as Aiden Dougherty, the junior, has the bulk of the minutes with 646. But Ronnie Perupski, 
got a big shootout win against Latrobe earlier in the season, and Elena Briscoe has a couple of wins to her credit as well. Oh, if I didn't know better, I'd say Austin McLean's more ubiquitous than Santa Claus. <laughs> We're seeing a lot of them these days. And it is Aiden Doherty, the aforementioned junior, getting the start for John Zeiler's Jaguars. Doherty coming in, seventh in minutes played, fifth in victories with seven of those to his credit, fifth in goals against average with a 3.0 mark on the nose and fifth and save percentage at 872. And this will be his first time facing the Spartans this season as the teams conclude their regular season series. And for Corey Meyer Spartans, it'll be Blaze Becker. Tenth in minutes played, getting the nod. 537 goals against, 822 save percentage. So both these teams switching up their goalies relative to the last meeting. And the game is on. And the Jaguars control the opening faceoff and move the puck from right to left on your TV, computer, or mobile device to begin the contest. Played off the boards by Ryder McGurk, who's back in the Thomas Jefferson lineup for the first time since January 23rd. And right off the hop, he seems to have caught something underneath his face guard caught a stick blade or something as he was clutching in his own mouth meanwhile Hemfield bringing the puck over through center now that's some bitter irony there for McGurk who appears to be no worse for the wear as he plays this puck off the half wall to Andrew Oliver Lance Smith the defenseman and team captain for TJ going off the boards near side for Nick Best Jaguars play it up to center Brian Spencer their all-star defenseman doing so to Andrew Oliver, his shot from medium range is blocked away by Becker as this puck is sent erroneously in between the seating areas. So 53 seconds in, we get our first stoppage and our first line change for both these clubs. Now, Thomas Jefferson, a team that started slowly after losing all those talented players to graduation from that Penguins Cup championship team of a year ago, but Ever since they lost that game to Hemfield, they've gotten their act together in a big way, winning 7 of 10 overall. And again, the Jaguars could conceivably still get home ice advantage in the opening round of the playoffs, which didn't look like it would be the case earlier in the season. Hemfield coming back with some speed. Nick Eberhardt over the line. He's bodied into the boards by Nathan Weiss. 
Shot from long range, never made it through. That was taken by Austin Heron, the sophomore defenseman. And the Jaguars, with some good gap control, bring the puck back to center. Ryan Gallus inside the left circle, over the stick hand of Becker. From the boards, it's played by Heron. Heron up to Eberhardt, his defensive partner. Eberhardt up ahead to Williams. Williams from long range. J.J. Williams putting it off the blocker of Aiden Doherty. Weiss over the blue line for TJ. Weiss shooting from the right circle. Loud save made there by Becker. And the rebound ricochets right out to Derek Schliebner, the freshman blue liner. Schliebner behind the net to Gallus. Gallus can't get to this puck as Chase Spihar beats him to the punch. Spear in behind the Thomas Jefferson goal. Going to be played near side by Drew Schliebner, the senior defenseman. And puck battle won by Kyle Seiler his fellow senior who puts it off the glass and back to center. Jamar Pritchett retreating for Hempfield. Sends this puck around the boards. Siler collides with the man in the corner and takes it away for TJ. Now Siler is stick checked himself by Owen Zerko. Spartans get it back to center. Drew Schliebner, uh, Derek Schliebner, excuse me, retreating and sending the puck deep. Thomas Jefferson going right in after the dump in with a sense of urgency, but Hemfield has this puck and McCauley from his knees is playing it. Delayed offside on the Spartans as they yield to Thomas Jefferson. Seiler sends it near side for Dwayne Sondheimer. Sondheimer crosses the blue line. Sondheimer bodied from behind and a penalty coming up against Hemfield. Logan Eisenman is going to be sent off by referee Trago and Eisenman couldn't believe the call. In defense of Eisman, he was playing the man with a puck. Roughing is going to be the call, but I think Eisman actually has a legitimate beef there. Well, Trigo is telling Eisman, I think, that he hit him from behind with the elbow. From my vantage point, it looked like he got there as the player was playing the puck, which is why I called it into question. But the Jaguars have scored right off the faceoff. Andrew Oliver, who came in ranked third in class double A in power play assists, now has a power play goal for the third time this year. His 10th goal overall, and the junior all-star makes it one nothing. Thomas Jefferson. Quick face-off win, quick shot, quick goal by the TJ power play. It came in ranked second in class double A out of the 11 teams in the classification at 32.8%. Uh, better make it an even 33. Long range snipe from Caden Horton. Second on the Spartans with 41 points and 17 goals. Horton getting an all-star nod as well as this puck goes wide of the Jaguars net. Max Short sitting into the corner, but the Jaguars intercept. Horton playing this puck, trying to hook up with Bruno, the Hempfield captain, but TJ sends it deep. Short will play it with his back to the play. Landon Hintemeyer going down as he is bodied up by Colin Crivello. Puck out in front, it's loose. Jaguars have it. Turnaround shot by Caller is blocked. Lance Smith in front of his own blue line sends it to the Hempfield bench. Hintemeyer backpedaling, trying to play it. Instead, it's taken by Horton. Horton over the blue line. Horton is sandwiched by a couple of Jaguars in the high slot area. Nick Bruno behind the net on his backhand. He immediately is harassed by Spencer. To the point it comes. Save made. Doherty didn't know where the rebound was. The Spartans have it. Bruno from his forehand. Cross ice for Max Short. Smith poking at it. It's loose in front of Doherty, and the Jaguars are content to just sail it back through center. 12.20 to go in a fast-moving first period. Thomas Jefferson with the early 1-0 lead on the power play goal by Andrew Oliver. Face-off coming up to Becker's right. Scott Allen wins it to the boards for Thomas Jefferson. Jake Simon, the freshman, sending it 
out in front, intercepted by Hemfield. Eberhardt gains the red line and rams it in all the way around the boards. Ian Shaw waiting for that puck at the half wall. Shaw and J.J. Williams work it loose. Eberhardt puts it around the dasher in behind the net as bodies collide near corner. Ryan Gallus with it now for TJ. Lead pass to Nathan Weiss, one on three. Weiss gets around those men. Weiss puts it off the crossbar. Oh, Nathan Weiss, the junior finding metal but not mesh. An extraordinary individual effort there as the Spartans come back in transition. Williams shot his block, side of the net. Shaw unable to bury. Out in front it comes, Spartans try the back door plates, loose in front of Doherty, and immediately cleaning up the mess is Weiss. Near side it comes to Gallus as John Zeiler changes behind the play. Bad angle shot, goes over the glove hand of Blaze Becker. Shot from distance by Oliver is blocked off a Hemfield ankle and that hurt Ian Shaw as he is limping big time back to the Spartans bench. Puck out of play with 11-11 to go in the first. One's across the board here in period one as it's 1-0 Jaguars. Held in at the point by Schliebner and Derek Schliebner misses the net. Ryder McGurk from the top of the left circle in behind the net for Oliver, the alternate captain. Oliver was stick checked from behind and that allows the Spartans to get it back to center. Nick Best over the line. Best from the edge of the right circle. He gave that puck up to Nick Krupe. Jaguars have it though. Best makes his move. Puts it wide of the glove hand of Becker. Derek Schliebner right point. Wide of the net. Nick Best right there for the rebound. Cross ice for McGurk. McGurk on his backhand. Uh, gave it up there to Nick McCauley. McCauley leaving it for Krupe. Krupe gets this puck deep as Corey Myers wants to change on the go here with his team down by a goal. Drew Schliebner gets it deep for TJ. Playing it for Hemfield behind his own net is Pritchett. Around the boards, it comes near side and up to Nick Bruno. Bruno with speed. Bruno has a path to goal. Bruno had that shot blocked from behind at the last moment. Good stick work there by Oliver, the lone goal scorer thus far. He plays a nice 200-foot game, does Andrew Oliver. Ryder McGurk over the blue line. McGurk with some space now. McGurk to the goal. Score! Welcome back, Ryder McGurk. 2-0 Thomas Jefferson. In his first game since January 23rd, McGurk, the junior all-star, nets his 14th of the season as he beats Becker cleanly on the backhand. Liam Mahoney trying to play this puck. Here come the Spartans. Eberhardt putting it high off the glass and wide. And this puck put off the side of the net by Owen Zerko. Mahoney had it go off his stick. It comes back to Lance Smith. Near side for Sonheimer. Sonheimer top of the left circle. Sonheimer to the goal. Oh, Becker might have got a piece of that. He had a defenseman out in front. That was... Caden Horton, or not Caden Horton, Colin Cravello, I beg your pardon. And Cravello might have had something to do with it also. Lance Smith, the TJ captain, getting this puck deep. Goes in after his own dump in. Cravello has it, though, for the Spartans, who find themselves down 2-0 on the road here as the clock up on the main scoreboard here at the Ice Castle has not moved since it stopped after the McGurk goal. It is stayed on 945 for some reason as Doherty at the other end makes a save from his knees and referee Trigo might have to go to the scores table to sort this out. We did have a conversation at the scores table, but it wasn't for the clock issue. It was for a penalty on Thomas Jefferson. 
Kyle Seiler going off for tripping. And so Hemfield gets its first power play of the night. Down by a pair as Doherty makes a nice glove save there from distance on Nick Eberhardt. And TJ has struggled on the penalty kill this season. Just 69.1% coming in. That puts them next to last in the classification. Hemfield about the middle of the pack on their power play rate. 25% even. Sixth overall coming in. Eberhardt has the puck center point for the Spartans. Right side to Bruno. Bruno's shot through. Traffic is held by Doherty. Uh, Bruno find, uh, found the smallest opening there, I beg your pardon, and somehow whistled that puck through, but the TJ Jr. was ready for it. Another clean face-off win to Eberhardt. Eberhardt off a glove hand, that of Spencer, as this hand pass, this legal hand pass, that is, is brought up through center by Nathan Weiss. Weiss shorthanded behind the net for TJ with a minute eight to go in the Hemfield power play. Weiss dangling, Weiss to the goal, Weiss shooting. Becker with the save, the rebound cleared out of there by Chase Spear. Nathan Weiss with a whale of a shift on the PK here for John Zeiler as we approach the midpoint of period one. Great start to this game for TJ playing its final regular season home contest of 2022-2023. Forty to go in the Hempfield power play. Here comes their top gun, Nick Bruno, dropping to his proverbial sidekick, Caden Horton, and this shot from above the left circle skitters wide. Max Short unable to find the net there as the Jaguars clear it with 23 to go in the man advantage for Hempfield. Bruno coming off here as the Spartans have one last rush perhaps on this power play. Spencer intercepts and sends it the length, and that should just about do it. So a good first effort by a penalty-killing unit that statistically had struggled as Siler immediately goes back to the TJ bench, and it remains a 2-0 Jaguar lead. Krupe over the line, gets this puck deep. Doherty watches it bounce off the boards as it's brought around near side by Schliebner, and a puck on net. Oh, that went in the glove somehow of Doherty. I don't know how he read that deflection. But he has it in his paw. Nick Bruno and the Hemfield Spartans down 2 0 here with time ticking away in period one, 7 15 remaining. Jaguars play it up to their own blue line, but not quite out. Here's a shot from long range. That's denied by Doherty. Caller unable to accept that lead pass. Hintemeyer has it, though. Landon Hintemeyer hits the brakes in the left circle. Dances. Puts it out in front. Nobody home except Austin Heron. Shot from the edge of the right circle by Zach Strutt, the senior defenseman, is stopped and held by Belaze Becker. Tyler off the draw. Long range snipe. This one taken from Strutt. And Becker holds one more time. Now Coach Zyler taking the reins off and letting the horses run. Thomas Jefferson in this first period shooting from just about anywhere on the ice it seems. Bruno from the right hash mark. That shot never made it close. And the Spartans force a turnover, though. Horton, turnaround try. Score! And put some stank on it, Caden Horton. 2 1 is your score. 6 20 to go, first period. Horton with a Wild snapshot there from in close that beats Doherty. His 18th of the season.
So the Spartans shake off the rocky start to some extent, and they're to within one now with six and a quarter to go in the opening period. Well, when all else fails, put the game on the tape of one of your best players, and Horton, the All-Stars, had a magnificent senior season for Corey Myers. Outlet pass too far for Gallus, and this is icing on Thomas Jefferson. And for freshman defenseman Evan Dunlap, that is his first ever varsity point on the assist on that Horton tally. Somebody better get that puck to Evan. And near corner it comes off the faceoff to Ryan Gallus. Gallus unable to clear as Shaw cut it off. But now the Jaguars do get it up to center where Eberhard has it for Hemfield. Going left side to Cravello. Cravello bodied hard into the TJ bench as this bouncing puck is up to Gallus. And Gallus has some room to maneuver. Gallus to the goal. Puts it wide of the blocker hand of Blaise Becker. Oh, the Spartans dodge a bullet there as they send it up ahead. A little too far for Shaw. J.J. Williams inside the blue line. Plays it on his backhand and wants to come off here as the Spartans were trying to complete a line change. Left side, Derek Schliebner. Side of the net, Gallus. That shot stopped by Becker. Nathan Weiss with it in the corner now. Brings it out in front. Turnaround try. Uh, that never made it through. Drew Schliebner with it now. And through a crowd, he puts it into the outstretched glove hand of the silly cider. Blaze Becker, that's what you call those left-handed catching goaltenders. That's the term that Sidney Crosby told a reporter there recently at least, the silly siders. Face off coming up to Becker's right. Oliver to take it against Zerko. Max Short wins it for Hemfield and outlets it. Near side for Nick McCauley. McCauley up ahead to Krupe. Krupe couldn't handle it. Spar uh, Jaguars, excuse me, clear the zone. Or do they? No, they don't. But Oliver is there to make the second effort true. And TJ plays this puck behind its own goal line now. Schliebner looking for McGurk up ahead. McGurk cut off by McCauley. Now McGurk has it for the Jaguars. McGurk left side. Top of the left circle. McGurk unable to outmaneuver the last man. That was Short who blew a tire in the process. They're looking for Oliver out in front, but Oliver was too well covered. Nick Best. Now stabs at this puck for McGurk. McGurk to Best. Best trying to get a last ditch shot off. He can't. McGurk has it. And we're going to get a penalty coming up here. A cross checking call with 3.50 to go in the first period. And it's going to be a retaliation penalty. And I think this is going to go on Nick Best. It is. Uh, that'll drive any coach nuts, those offensive zone penalties. And all it took was a brief moment for Best, the junior, to lose his head there. And so Hemfield gets its second power play opportunity of the first period. And the Spartans have a little momentum now, climbing back in after the goal by Horton. Now a one-goal game and a five-on-four for the visitors. Jaguars get a good clear off the faceoff, though. And that forces Eberhardt to backpedal in front of his own goaltender. He's watched all the way by Scott Allen as the puck bounces near side to Nick Bruno. Bruno over the line. Bruno between the circles. Score! Yes, we can talk about Bruno. 2-2, 328 to go. First period, a power play goal by the leading scorer in PIHL Class AA. The erstwhile player of the month with his 30th of the regular season and sixth on the power play this season. 
career goal number 64 in PIHL play for the Pittsburgh Vengeance product. Career point number 135 as Bruno remains the Class AA leader in overall power play points with that tally late in the first period. From the right hash, it's put in on goal. Save made Becker, and the rebound is steered aside. Puck out of play into the Hempfield fan section. And I give the Spartans credit. They weathered a big early storm, an early onslaught, really, by the Jaguars, who came out flying, got the power play goal by Oliver, and McGurk giving his team a big boost by scoring in his first game back in the lineup in nearly a month. But then Hemfield putting the game in the hands of their two top scorers, Horton making it a one goal game, and then Bruno moments ago tying it up on the man advantage for the Spartans. Shot by Cravello from long range is casually knocked aside by Doherty. Nick Best from the far boards outletting for McGurk. McGurk brings it up through the left side. McGurk with it on his backhand. Now to his forehand, shoots, save made. I think Becker got a piece of that. Nick Best from a bad angle. That's stopped by Becker. Oh, McGurk is a fun player to watch when he gets that puck in space. As he demonstrated earlier in this period. Williams contacted from behind as play continues. Jaguars go D to D. Strutt playing this puck as it comes up ahead to Oliver. He's two on one with McGurk. Oliver to McGurk. McGurk to the goal. Oh, what a poke check there. Mark Andre Fleury style from Blaze Becker. Bruno can't take the lead pass, and Doherty, Doherty excuse me, is not going to take any chances. Uh, this time, Becker read that move that McGurk made on the last goal, and he knocked it out of there before McGurk could convert his second. Spartans off the faceoff, chasing this puck down, but Zach Strutt has it for TJ. Up to Ryan Gallus. Gallus and Strutt get tied up in the neutral zone now as Bruno tries to tap it ahead for Logan Eisman. Jake Simon, the freshman, behind his own net. Final minute 30 of first period play, and a giveaway to Bruno, who puts it off the blocker hand of Doherty. Oh, a sloppy play there by TJ, but the Jaguars survive. Spartans play it at their own blue line. Outlet pass to the left side. Bruno giving chase. Strutt gets there first. Allen makes a little move, sends it up ahead to Gallus. Those two unable to connect. Heron gets shouldered up high by Allen as he gets this puck deep. Derek Schliebner with it now, outletting for Gallus. Gallus one on two. Gallus off a leg, and it goes in behind the goal. Nick Krupe gave it away to one of the Jaguars, and we got a penalty coming up here. A slashing call. And this one's going to go against the Jaguars as well. Now suddenly, TJ can't get out of its own way. Gallus takes another offensive zone penalty. And if I'm Zyler, I've got some steam coming out of my ears over the turn this period has taken. A third Hemfield power play. They are one for two thus far. And it will carry over into the second period, barring a goal here as this shot goes over the glove hand of Doherty. Out in front for Horton. Horton bodied off the puck by Oliver. Now Spencer up ahead to McGurk shorthanded. Final 15 of the period. McGurk to the net. McGurk poke checked again. Another good anticipatory move there by Becker. Bruno hooked from behind. And another penalty coming up as McGurk uh, hits Bruno from behind. Extra attacker coming on for Hemfield. The extra man is J.J. Williams as the period ends. So the Spartans have taken back momentum after getting off to the rough start on the road. 
And now they will begin the second period in a tie game with a two-man advantage for a minute 18 seconds. What a development here at the Ice Castle in Castle Shannon where your score after one is Thomas Jefferson 2, Hemfield 2. I'm Matt Popchuk, and you're watching PIHL Hockey Night Live on 10 Band TV, presented by Weight Loss Direct. Well, based on the way that first period shook out, it should surprise nobody that there were a combined 30 shots on goal. 16 belonging to the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars, 14 belonging to the Hemfield Spartans, who are in a 2-2 deadlock as we begin period two with a two-man advantage going to the visiting Spartans. Ryan Gallus in the box for slashing for another minute 18. Ryder McGurk, who scored a goal in that first period at even strength, sent off at the end of the first period for cross-checking. Pivotal moment in this game as the Spartans look to take their first lead after falling behind 2-0. And losing an edge in behind the goal line was Iceman as he placed it to the boards and the Jaguars bring it back to center and Lance Smith skates up with it shorthanded under pressure from Nick Bruno. One minute left on the two-man power play as Bruno pays the price to get that puck to Eberhardt. Eberhardt back to Bruno and the Hemfield captain goes left side to short. Short. Met at the blue line by Lance Smith. Spartans have to tag up. That was good work by Smith to take some more time off the clock. Eberhardt for Bruno. Bruno is whacked out a couple of times by Oliver. Caden Horton center point. Lots of time and space. Horton for Eberhardt. Eberhardt shooting. Never made it through. It was blocked, I think, by Spencer, who clears his own. 25 to go on the two-man advantage. Early moments of the second period. Around the boards, it's outletted to Max Short. Both teams making some changes as Hempfield slowly brings this puck up to center. Horton over the blue line. Horton from inside the right circle. Goes around the boards for Bruno. Final moments of the two-man power play. Max Short, center point. High slot, that shot blocked. Oliver has it. Has a man coming out of the box. Oliver, one on two. Oliver trying to center it. He can't. He'll just put it up against the side of the net. And some heroic penalty killing early in the second period forces an own zone face off to the Spartans as Becker had to cover that puck. 35 to go on the penalty to McGurk. So the Jaguars now two of three on the PK, trying to make it three of four. And he talk about momentum swings in a hockey game, a huge opportunity here for TJ to take momentum right back after losing it at the end of the first period. And so far, they're cashing in. Another face-off, same spot. Shaw had a stick tied up by Allen. The Jaguar is going to rag this puck in the neutral zone before they send it deep. Final 20 seconds of the Hempfield power play to begin the second period here at the Ice Castle in Castle Shannon, Pennsylvania. Nick Krupe. Sends this puck around the boards just shy of the TJ blue line. It's cut off there by Strutt. Strutt gave it up to Williams. Williams for Shaw. Final seconds of the power play, which has now expired. Huge kill to begin the period by the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars. Hemfield continues to pressure with the puck as it's poke checked by Schliedner. Derek Schliedner, that is. Outlet pass is given away to Williams. Williams trying to go cross ice. McGurk might have played that with a high stick. Officials disagree, though. And so play continues deep in TJ territory. Nick Best threw it to the 
wrong shoulder of McGurk, a little too strong on that outlet pass. So the Spartans retreat as the other number 44, Austin Heron, plays the puck for Hemfield. Giveaway to the Jaguars, out in front for McGurk. McGurk, score! Thank you, sir, may I have another? Ryder McGurk makes it 3-2 Thomas Jefferson with 14-18 to go to the ice cut. Uh, McGurk has missed some time this season, but as soon as he gets back in the lineup, he makes his presence felt. And so McGurk, who gave the Spartans that two-man advantage at the end of the first, pulls a Lloyd Christmas and totally redeems himself. Jaguars back in front. Ryder McGurk with a wicked snapshot from right between the circles for his 15th goal of the regular season. And he's right back on the attack here with his Thomas Jefferson teammates and putting it off the stomach of Blaze Becker. Outlet pass. Eisman had to reach around for that puck. He reels it in, gets it near side. Going in after it is Caden Horton, the senior all-star for Hemfield. Good stick work there down low by Weiss to play that puck. Spartan still on the attack, but that backdoor pass is given away. Weiss with it. Up the right side. Weiss in the circle is poke checked by a couple of Spartans as Horton is met by Mahoney. Shot from the point by Spencer. Goes to the far corner. Spartans get it back to center as Eisman leads it ahead for Caden Horton. Horton with a toe drag. Horton poke checked by Smith at the last moment as those players knock each other down. Penalty coming up on the Jaguars again as Bruno was hauled down from behind. Tripping the indication against the Jaguars, a fifth power play. Couldn't remember fourth or fifth. It is the fifth power play in this game for the Hemfield Spartans. And Blaze Becker has a problem with his mask that he's trying to get addressed at the Hemfield bench. 13.07 to go to the ice cut. Thomas Jefferson back in front 3-2 after a big penalty kill. Killing off a five on three for a minute 18 to begin the second period. But that PK has to go right back to work now. Uh, Becker wearing one of those headbands underneath his mask. I'm dating myself here, but every time I see a headband, the first thing I think of is Jim McMahon. The old Chicago Bears quarterback. He always used to wear those headbands with the uh, messages on them. Well, maybe those headbands will start to come back. You never know. Fashion is cyclical. <laughs> Uh, anyway, Becker's equipment appears to be all right now, and Hemfield goes back to work on the PP. Lance Smith playing this puck on one hand for the Jaguars, but he gave it up to Horton. Now Oliver brings it up to center and has a man breaking up ice shorthanded. That was Austin Caller. Oliver content to just get the puck deep, though, and goes to work on Eberhardt behind the Hemfield net. Eberhardt sends it up to nobody in particular except Lance Smith, and the TJ captain sends it the length of the ice. A minute 30 to go on the minor penalty for tripping to Brian Spencer, the all-star defenseman of Thomas Jefferson. Eberhardt over the line for the Spartans. He shoots it off the iron. Uh, kiss that post, Aiden Dougherty. Eberhardt, the junior blue liner, finding metal but not mesh. And it remains a one-goal game with a minute eight to go on the Hemfield power play. And Strutt is going to be able to clear the zone as Becker leaves his net to play it and almost gives it away. Now, oh, very nearly gave it away to Lance Smith behind his own goal. That could have been disastrous. But the Spartans get it up to center. Iceman over the line. Right side for Bruno. Bruno for Eberhardt. Eberhardt offside. Hemfield has to tag up. And that allows TJ to press shorthanded. Here's Caller. Keller sets it up for Oliver. Oliver to the net! Oh, everything there but the execution. Andrew Oliver that close to his second special teams goal of the game. Half a minute to go in the Hemfield power play. 
more superb penalty killing by this TJ unit, which has really stepped up. And the Spartans bring it up to center. Here's Shaw with 15 to go on the man advantage. He's met at the edge of the circle by Allen. And Allen is able to send that puck free to a Thomas Jefferson teammate. That's Zach Strutt who wants to come off here. And that's going to do it for another Hempfield power play. Thomas Jefferson four for five on the penalty kill in this game, which remains 3-2 in the Jaguars' favor with under 11 to go in the second period. Here's a shot by Spencer fresh out of the box from above the right circle that is held by Becker. Siler on to take the face off against Shaw. To the boards it comes. Jake Simon to the hash mark for Mahoney. Mahoney is stick checked by J.J. Williams. Shaw at the red line. Gets it into T.J. territory briefly before the Jaguars send it right back to neutral ice. Mahoney tries to get up ahead of the play. He stood up by Heron as he sends this puck around the Hemfield boards. Evan Dunlap who notched his first varsity point on the goal by Caden Horton in the first period. Sends this puck, helps send this puck anyway, back to center. Heron off the boards, good keep there by Schliebner into the equipment of Becker, the Hempfield senior. Uh, Becker individually only two six and one on the season again it's chase sankey his fellow senior who has gotten the glory in the sense of getting the all-star nomination and getting credit for most of hemfield's victories but it's becker who's played a slight majority or plurality i guess he would say of the minutes for corey myers club And this should be icing against the Jaguars. It is not. Uh, they're going to say Cravello dummy the play. Uh, Myers not necessarily happy with that call as Bruno, his captain, plays it up ahead to Horton. Bruno and Horton, the usual suspects, both with goals tonight for Hemfield. Ryder McGurk has pulled Thomas Jefferson back ahead with his second of the night as this snapshot by Cravello is blocked. Bruno from the boards. Bruno, top of the right circle. Kicks it to himself. Plays it around the boards where it's going to be taken away by Spencer. Spencer kept it away from Eisenman as the Jaguars get it back to the Hemfield blue line. Bruno gave it up to Seiler in neutral ice. Eisenman sends it deep on the backhand. Spartans making a change behind the play as Horton goes into the boards with Spencer. Krupe playing this puck in front of the scorer's table and in behind the Thomas Jefferson net. Spencer near side. Up ahead to Best who cut that off. I think Oliver was actually the intended target there. Uh, maybe those two weren't on the same page. McGurk draws a triple team and he surrenders this puck to Chase Spear. But the Spartans can't clear the zone. Out in front it comes. Oh, Best couldn't take that centering pass. And here comes Hemfield up ahead. This Outlet puck a little too far from McCauley. It will not be icing as he collides in the corner with Strutt. We've passed the midpoint of the period and game as one of the Jaguars is knocked down in the crease. Thomas Jefferson three, Hempfield two in a battle for a Class AA Penguins Cup playoff positioning. Jaguars playing their final home regular season game here tonight at the Ice Castle. Hemfield has one more regular season game to go after tonight, and that's back at home for them as well. That'll be against Franklin Regional on February 27th at the Kirk Nevin Arena. McGurk centers it out in front. Nobody there except a bunch of blue shirts. Nick Eberhardt up to center. Crosses the TJ blue line. Puts it off the body of Strutt. Good gap control there by the TJ defenseman. Nick Best. Tries to squeeze around Max Short. Out in front it comes. It's given right to Oliver, who couldn't settle that puck down for a clean shot attempt. 
Jaguars get it deep though as Gallus is contacted up high. Strut pinching to keep the sequence alive for the Jaguars. Pritchett with a hard hit there on Best as the Spartans clear their zone. TJ has to tag up here and it will with seven to go in the period. Outlet pass intercepted by Allen and taken back by Shaw. Scott Allen flying up the right wing. Allen through the edge of the circle. Off the equipment of Becker from a bad angle. And the Spartans send this puck nearly the length of the ice. Dockerty leaving his net to play. It gave it away to Everhart, but Dockerty was in position to make the save. Nearly a very costly turnover there by the junior goaltender. Allen hit from behind by Shaw. And Allen's going to be able to get it out of the zone nevertheless. Pritchett hits the brakes. Now attracts the attention of Ryan Gallus as he brings it up on the backhand. Under the stick of Derek, uh, Drew Schliebner, excuse me. Derek Schliebner will play it near side for the Jaguars defensively. Derek Schliebner has Weiss up ahead of the play. Weiss has the puck now for TJ. Weiss on the backhand. Good poke check there, though, by Heron. Spartans can't clear it. Gallus from his corner. Out in front, nobody home. And the Spartans have a three on one. Iceman for Bruno. Bruno and Horton driving the net. Bruno for Iceman. Iceman stick check from behind. Chance the other way though. Oh, what an unconscious save by Dockerty. He had no idea where that puck was. Oliver in the other end puts this puck out of play. Dougherty had the initial shot cut off on the odd man rush, but there was a big juicy rebound that bounced out right to a Spartan stick. And through traffic, the Spartans had an exposed net at which to shoot, but they couldn't hit it. Near corner. Played by Hintemeyer. Up to the point, Lance Smith keeps it in the zone. That shot blocked from long range. Good play there by Spihar. And Spihar brings it over the line himself. Shot pass attempted to Bruno. That wouldn't go. Jaguars send it up to Caller. Lance Smith and Caller are offside with just under five to go till the ice cut. The only goal of the second period thus far belongs to Ryder McGurk at even strength. Three big penalty kills by Thomas Jefferson in the period, including a two-man advantage for a minute 18 seconds at the beginning of the stanza. This outlet pass through some bodies. Finds Kyle Seiler. Seiler bodied off the puck by Williams. Ian Shaw on his backhand. Sends it the other way for Eberhardt. Eberhardt had a step on Smith, but Smith catches him. Now Eberhardt goes to his stomach as this puck goes to the corner. Out in front it comes, right to a Hemfield stick, that of Cravello, the junior. For Eberhardt, Eberhardt on his backhand, puts it wide of the net. Oh, Eberhardt didn't miss by much. Cravello from a bad angle, that misses the cage as well. J.J. Williams centers it, and it bounces in on Dougherty, who will play it conservatively. Now Hemfield catching TJ on their collective back foot a bit on that shift. Face-off coming up to Dougherty's left as John Zeiler wants a fresh unit out there. John Zeiler, former Thomas Jefferson great, former LA Kings player, the third PIHL player to play in the NHL. Zeiler as head coach taking over last season for the retired Bill Krause as we get a whistle and a stoppage in play and the net behind Dougherty is dislodged if I'm not mistaken. Zeiler leading the Jaguars to their first Penguins Cup championship since Zeiler won three in a row as a player at the turn of the century.
You know, there may be some disagreement on where this faceoff should come. Referee Snyder bringing it outside the Hemfield blue line as he and Trago talk things over. Final four of period two. It's a 3-2 game in favor of the Jaguars. Spartans win the faceoff. Mahoney takes it away for TJ. Mahoney bodied into the boards and that allows Zerko to play it around the dasher. Back to center it comes free to Strut. Strut at center red, a biffed on that dump in attempt as Doherty has to make a glove save from long range as players push and shove in front of the Thomas Jefferson netminder. And Zach Strutt taking some exception to what one of the Spartans did. And that was Nick McCauley, the junior forward in the fracas for Hempfield as Corey Myers wants to make a line change late in the period, as does his counterpart on the home bench. McGurk unable to clear, and now a bit of puck luck there as the Spartans couldn't get that puck on net, and a chance the other way possibly for McGurk as he gets it to Best. Best knocked down from behind, penalty coming up on the Hemfield Spartans. Chase Spear is gonna be the guilty party here with 3.21 to go in the second period. Tripping the indication against the junior defenseman. And so Thomas Jefferson, which scored the game's first goal on the main advantage, gets another power play here late in the second period. Here's Bruno shorthanded for Hemfield. He's up ahead of the play with Horton, and he puts it off the blocker hand of Aiden Dougherty. Bruno, first in class double-A in shorthanded points, so keep the puck away from him by any means necessary. Bruno out in front. Oh, had that puck at his feet. He was looking for it, trying to tee it up for a shorthanded attempt, but could not. Allen is poked at from the boards. Lance Smith above the right circle. Smith for Oliver. Oliver lost that puck at his feet. Jaguars have to tag up, and they got to be careful here as Horton pressures and forces a turnover. Horton coming back shorthanded, shooting, and a save made by Doherty from distance. A minute eight to go in the TJ power play as McGurk takes the lead pass. McGurk creates space. McGurk poke checked at the last moment. Good play there by Heron. Smith for Weiss. Weiss out in front. Oh, loose at the side of the net. And Becker covers. 52 seconds to go in the TJ power play, and we see how dangerous this Hemfield team can be shorthanded with the two world-class scorers they have at their disposal. Nick Bruno and Caden Horton, who have two goals in this game, the only two for the Spartans, trying to make some shorthanded magic late in the period to get the Spartans back in it. Puck dribbling in the right circle. It's played and gloved down by Shaw. Shaw gains the red line, sends it in around the Thomas Jefferson net. J.J. Williams going in after it, ties up his man. But Spencer wriggles free, comes up to center. Dump in by Shaw. Final 25 of the Thomas Jefferson power play. Final minute 40 of period two. Spencer over the blue line. Spencer hits the brakes, sends it behind the net for Hintemeyer. Hintemeyer up top to Spencer. Spencer in on goal, save made, and the rebound deflected wide. Hintemeyer from the left hash, trying to put it out in front, dribbling puck, given right back to Best. Power play is over. This shot on goal hit off one of his own men. That was Hintemeyer. Bouncing puck gathered in by Bruno. Bruno can't get it through Spencer. Uh, good work there by Spencer to anticipate what the Spartans were trying to do there at the end of the PK. And Doherty covers for a faceoff.
Hemfield coming in at 79.2% on the PK. Good for fourth of the 11 teams in Class AA. So they're a very strong penalty-killing side as McGurk has space down the left wing. McGurk out on the side of the net trying to hook up with Nick Best, but he couldn't take the pass. Strutt put it off his own man at the blue line. Jaguars tag up as Oliver brings it over the stripe. He's bodied immediately by Max Short. 45 ticks to talk in period two. Strutt now backpedaling, outletting off a Hemfield stick, and ultimately it comes to the blade of Jamar Pritchett. Horton stymied a bit in his own zone as he settles this puck down off the boards. Horton trying to play it to himself, getting a little too cute perhaps as McGurk took it away, and now the Spartans are not going to ice this puck as Doherty has to play it in the final 20 seconds of the period. Give it away to Bruno. Bruno cutting to the net, shoots. Oh, what a save by Aiden Doherty! His biggest to the night! The presumptive Class AA scoring champion had Aiden Doherty at his mercy. Aiden Doherty had other ideas. Ten seconds to play. And this is going to be icing against TJ. So we'll have one more face-off in Jaguars ice with 5.9 seconds on the second period clock. Jaguars tie up their man in the circle. And that will do it for the second period. Well, not for nothing, we will cut the ice at the Ice Castle in Castle Shannon with the host Thomas Jefferson Jaguars holding on to a one-goal lead. Jaguars three, Hemfield Spartans two, after two periods here in Castle Shannon. I'm Matt Popchock, and you're watching it all on PIHL Hockey Night Live on 10 Band TV, presented by Weight Loss Direct. After the ice cut, we'll have third period action for you here from the Ice Castle. But first, here's some music from the 412.
Two jumbo ice caramel drizzle peppermint mochaccino. Extra caramel. That's us. I'd love to join you guys at the beach house for a few days, but between my job and the kids, it's just not that easy. Not to mention, how am I squeezing into a bikini after this winter? Keeping off extra pounds while balancing a family and a career can be tough. And 500 calorie coffees won't get you there either. Weight Loss Direct provides a 24 7 support and one on one coaching to keep you on track and guarantee you success and health. Start your journey at weightlossdirect.com. All across the United States, each state has what's called an immunization information system. Immunization information systems, or IIS, are confidential, population-based, computerized databases that record all immunization doses administered by participating providers to persons residing within a given geopolitical area. In the United States, every vaccination registry is a bit different, which can become daunting and confusing. Enter PubHub. PubHub solves this issue by giving its providers the ability to connect and communicate to the state registry with one connection and one data format. For example, if a patient has received the COVID-19 vaccine, PubHub allows the provider to see if the patient has already received the vaccine, keeping everything safe and organized for everyone.
And a shout out to Old Neon for the music you heard during the ice cut. And you can hear more from Old Neon and other great local bands on musicfromthe412.com or download the Music From The 412 app to your Roku or Amazon Fire capable device. Second period shots on goal, nine aside. Game totals, Thomas Jefferson 25, Hempfield 23, where it counts the Jaguars of Thomas Jefferson have retaken the lead over the Spartans of Hempfield by a score of 3-2 as we prepare for the third and final period of regulation play. And it was Andrew Oliver on the power play set up by Lance Smith, 3.06 into the first, to making it 1-0 TJ. Oliver and Smith had both come in tied for third in Class AA and power play assists. This time it's Oliver getting the goal. At 7.15, Ryder McGurk in his first game back since January 23rd, scoring at even strength from Derek Schliebner and Nick Best to make a 2-0 jab Jaguars, excuse me. Caden Horton got Hemfield on the board at even strength from Evan Dunlap and Logan Eisenman at 10.40. Then at 13.32, Nick Bruno, the presumptive Class AA scoring champion with goal number 30 and point number 65 on the season. He now has 16 power play points after his PPG from Caden Horton and Nick Eberhart tie the game after one. 2.42 into the second period after a big two-man penalty kill by the Jaguars. Ryder McGurk, his second of the game at even strength from Scott Allen and Nick Best with his second helper. And that's where we stand right now. Lance Smith now with a four-game point streak after that helper on Oliver's initial power play goal. He had a goal and an assist the last time these teams met. And right now he's talking things over with his line mate Oliver at center ice as something is being repaired in Aiden Doherty's goal crease. A bit of an ice maintenance problem that the referees are tending to in a somewhat hasty manner. Trying to smooth things over in the blue paint there. So we have a bit of a delay before the beginning of this third period. Again, the playoff field, generally speaking, is set in Class AA. Thomas Jefferson and Hemfield will both be a part of it. Armstrong, South Fayette, Bishop McCourt, Greater Latrobe, Penn Trafford, TJ, Franklin Regional, and the Spartans will be the eight-team field in this year's Penguins Cup playoff bracket in Class AA. Thomas Jefferson, again, they can move up to fifth if they win tonight. This is the only Class AA game on the schedule tonight, so we know that for a fact. And if the Jaguars hold serve at home, that would lock Hemfield into that number eight spot which means a road date in round one with either Armstrong or South Fayette. Now the Spartans and Lions played a very fascinating game back at the end of November this regular season with South Fayette rallying for a victory. You can watch that game on demand on 10-band TV, online or on your Roku or Amazon Fire Stick. As you can, all our PIHL Hockey Night Live broadcasts. So we are finally ready to put the spaghetti in the machine here as referee Trago does the honors. And we're back to action here at the Ice Castle. Jaguars control the opening draw. McGurk sends it around the Hemfield net. Nick Best has it at his feet. He's bumped from behind by Spiar. McGurk is contacted by Bruno at the half wall. Left it for Andrew Oliver. Good cycle by the Jaguars to begin the third period, but not a shot on goal just yet as it's stolen away by Bruno, and Bruno sends it up to center red where it's taken by Lance Smith. Smith stick-checked by Horton, but the Jaguars do get it back to center, and here's McGurk two-on-two two with Oliver. McGurk and Oliver offside as McGurk fires it into the glove hand, off the glove hand of Becker. Nick Bruno, the Hempfield All-Star Senior. Eight points now in his last four games in PIHL competition. 
including a goal here tonight on the man advantage. Both teams with a power play goal in this game, as I said, but the big story from a special team standpoint, the Thomas Jefferson penalty kill, four for five, gutsy, in a year that has seen the Jaguars struggle at times on the PK mightily. Shot from a bad angle by Shaw, misses everything. Nathan Weiss gets it deep for TJ. Ryan Gallus in pursuit. Instead, it's going to be taken by Evan Dunlap, the freshman defenseman, and sent the length of the ice. And this will be an icing call against the Hempfield Spartans. Faceoff coming up to Becker's right. In behind the net, it's played on the backhand by Heron. Kept alive by TJ, and oh, Becker had to be ready to make a save there on the shot from distance by Zach Strutt. To the corner for Kyle Seiler. Seiler crisscrossing with Liam Mahoney. Mahoney lets it go under his stick to the corner. Taken by Dunlap of Hemfield. Dunlap up ahead to Krupe. Krupe for McCauley. McCauley, stick checked by Strutt, and under heavy pressure, Krupe yields possession. Sondheimer counterattacking all by himself for the Jaguars. He is dispossessed easily by the Spartans, but now he forces a giveaway. Mahoney misplayed that puck. Jaguars have to tag up as Mahoney and Seiler get back on side. McCauley unable to outlet that puck. Cut off by Seiler. Seiler, centering pass. Went by everybody. Schliebner waiting at the, red, uh, at the center red line as we get a stoppage in play here with 14.37 to go in regulation. And off the faceoff, it's taken on the backhand by Eisenman just inside the Thomas Jefferson blue line. McGurk peels it away from Bruno as the Jaguars come through center. Best from the left circle. Bad angle shot. That went over the head and the shoulder of Blaze Becker, the Hemfield senior goaltender. Backdoor play cut off by Bruno at the edge of the right circle. Bruno from his own corner now in behind the Hemfield net. He'll let Spihar break it out for Cravello. Nick Bruno from the referee's crease gets this puck deep. Going in after the dump in is Logan Eisman as Schliebner, Drew Schliebner that is, went down. Doherty ready to make the save there as Bruno gloves the puck down, turns around. The shot blocked by Oliver as he gets the puck back to neutral ice. Corey Myers calling for an early line change here with 13 and a half to go in the third period. Thomas Jefferson leading Hempfield three to two. Bodies collide at the Hempfield blue line as McGurk brings it onside or does he? No, he doesn't. And now we're gonna get a penalty. An interference call is indicated by referee Trago. And the Jaguars are gonna get their third power play of the game. J.J. Williams going off with 13-17 remaining in regulation. Big moment in this game for both special teams, but in particular for the Thomas Jefferson power play. Second ranked unit in the classification coming in. An insurance goal here would feel awfully big. Spartans win the faceoff, though, and Eberhardt sends it the length of the ice. Thomas Jefferson's student section with some good-natured ribbing as the Jaguars operate on the power play. They're looking to go to McGurk, but McGurk was too well covered. Allen for Oliver. Oliver for Nathan Weiss. Weiss for Oliver. 
all over behind the net. And that's Scott Allen, I beg your pardon, 27, not 26. Turnaround snipe from the middle of the right circle, never made it on goal. Spartans win possession. Horton is able to get it just barely outside his blue line for Bruno. Those two easily the most dangerous players on the ice, shorthanded for Hempfield. But the Jaguars have the puck coming through center with a minute eight to go on the power play. McGurk poke checked, and that puck is kicked at by Max Short as he clears the area. Horton shorthanded, taking more time off that penalty clock. Midway through the power play now. Oliver over the line. Oliver shoots. Save made by Becker and the rebound kids. The rebound, excuse me, is kicked right out to Chase Spear. Cross ice it comes to Weiss. Weiss shooting wide. Oliver hustling to keep this puck alive. He can't. Bruno might have a chance shorthanded, but that deflection was just too far for him. He picks it up from the corner, though, and Bruno wheels around with great speed. Now he's hit up high as play continues. Spartans. Take more time off the clock. 20 to go in the power play. Bruno bodied off it by Weiss. Bruno shorthanded. Bruno behind the net. Bruno trying the wraparound. And puck just wide by Shaw. Oh, the Spartans with some golden shorthanded opportunities in this hockey game. But it remains a one goal difference with 14 to go in the PK for Hemfield. And these power plays almost become a battle not to beat yourself with the game still in the balance. 11.25 to go, third period, as the Jaguars will drop to one for three on the power play. Snapshot from above the circle, taken as the penalty expires, goes wide from Sondheimer. Spencer gets it deep into Hempfield ice. Surveying the play is Spihar. He sends it too far for Williams. Settled down far corner in his own zone by Nick Best, the junior defenseman. Goes to his partner, Spencer. Spencer outletting it, threw it to the wrong shoulder for Sondheimer. And Becker's going to let it go for icing. Face off to Aiden Doherty's left. Oliver against Bruno. Going forward off the face off his ice and out in front went by everybody. Taken the other way by Hintemeyer. Landon Hintemeyer building speed over the blue line. He's stood up. Good play there by Pritchett. Caller in front on his backhand. Drops it to the point. And to the corner it goes off the deflection by Spencer. Kaler with it, near corner. Is turned around by Eisenman. Up for Max Short. Short bodied hard by Oliver as the puck comes into the TJ zone. Bruno turned around off that puck by Kaler. Hintemeyer. Gave it away to one of the Spartans there at the blue line. That was Max Short. Smith sending it deep. Didn't have the red line though, and TJ guilty of icing with just under 10 to go in regulation. John Zeiler calling for a fresh line to take this face off to the left of Doherty. Ryder McGurk with the go-ahead goal early in the second period. His second goal of his return game after missing three weeks of PIHL action. Allen is bodied up high as he brings this puck deep into Hemfield territory. Gallus around the boards. Now Allen double teamed again by Horton and Spear as the Jaguars operate behind the goal line. Allen going to play it one more time as he's knocked to his knees. Play continues. Gallus out in front. Oh, he was trying to throw it blindly to Nathan Weiss. Weiss. Not anywhere near that pass, though. Weiss has the puck, however, as he's knocked to his stomach. Gets right back up and plays it for Allen. Now for Weiss. Weiss on the backhand. Score!
Nathan Weiss with a backhand beauty and a big goal in the third period to make it a two-goal game for the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars. Weiss is fourth of the season, and it's 4-2 TJ. Oh, Weiss stunned everybody there, including Becker, including us for that matter. That was a really pretty goal by the junior. Although if you watched our early game, well, we're not gonna tell you everything that happened in the early game, but you're gonna wanna keep an eye on social media. Let's just put it that way. That early game, by the way, was Bishop Canavan's senior night victory over Central Valley, spoiler alert, in which the Crusaders wrapped up the championship of the gold division in the PIHL co-op classification. And if you're one of the Canavan faithful, you can watch that game on demand right now on 10 Band TV. As the seven Crusader seniors were honored earlier this evening before that first game here at the Ice Castle. Past the midway point of the third period of this affair in PIHL Class 2A. As the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars look to climb the pecking order as they get ready for a title defense in March. Jaguars four, Hempfield Spartans two. Ryder McGurk has that puck on a string. Cross ice for Strutt, who's pinching deep in the offensive zone. Strutt now escorted into the glass as the Jaguars still have it. Here's Oliver above the left circle. Oliver crisscrossing with Simon. Off balance shot deflected in on goal and Becker got a piece, I think. A misplay there at the point by TJ. Dougherty settles it down as Hempfield wants to make a line change on the fly. Simon Murphy dumping this puck deep into Hempfield territory and he's gonna be guilty of icing. And the ice man back in town at the ice castle. <laughs> Thank you, Austin McLean. Shot just wide of the Thomas Jefferson goal as Dougherty was flopping like a fish to get back to his feet to make a play on that one, should it have been necessary. And the Spartans, a resilient bunch. They were down early, 2-0, as the Jaguars got off to a flying start here on home ice, but rallied for... A couple of first period goals by their two top scorers, Caden Horton and Nick Bruno. Thomas Jefferson responding with an early second period goal from Ryder McGurk and a goal roughly midway through this third period by Nathan Weiss. Chance for the Jaguars the other way. Turnaround pass by Mahoney, misfired. Spear outletting this puck for Eberhardt. Eberhardt one on two for Hempfield. Above the right circle goes cross ice, nobody there except Drew Schliebner. Deflects back to center and up for Derek Schliebner. Schliebner might have a chance, but getting to this one first is gonna be Becker who outlets dangerously to Eberhardt. Eberhardt over the blue line. He slaps it wide of Dougherty. And the rebound comes all the way out through center right back into Hempfield ice. JJ Williams for Eberhardt. What a shift Eberhardt has had. He's a busy man out there for Corey Myers' squad. Giving away to Taylor. Oliver at the left point. Down low to Hintemeyer. Hintemeyer from a bad angle. Off the mask of Blaze Becker. My goodness. Headstrong that one. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Kaler puts his man into the boards. Jaguars unable to retain possession, though, as this puck bounces free to Pritchett. Given away to Oliver, however. Oliver, from between the circles, caught a piece of the post. He was looking for his second of the night. Uh, the alternate captain trying to apply a body check there on Horton, who ducks away from it and gets it up to Bruno. 
Bruno over the blue line. Bruno to the goal. He's sandwiched at the last moment by Spencer and Smith as Doherty outside the crease covers. Oh, you would think that Corey Myers with under five minutes to go in regulation is going to put some eggs in the same basket and try and get some offense with his team down by a pair on the road here. And you figure we're going to see a lot more of Bruno and Horton, even more than we normally would. But for now, they get a respite. And a fresh unit comes on for this faceoff in TJ Ice. The Jaguars get it back to center. And here comes Ryan Gallus over the blue line. Gallus from a bad angle out in front intended for Allen but broken up by the Spartans. This attempt from the right point is blocked. Glove down by Strutt, the alternate captain. Max Short reverses the play but gives it away to one of the Jaguars. That's Gallus. Gallus immediately double teamed as Hemfield comes back to center. Three men abreast as Krupe puts it into the TJ zone but the Spartans offside. And Myers' dynamic duo, not surprisingly, right back on the ice. Well, looks like I spoke too soon. Not just yet. Williams, Shaw. And Eberhardt, the trio offensively for Hempfield. As McGurk plays it at his own blue line. Given away to Shaw, but poke checked immediately by McGurk. Now here's Heron toward goal. Heron shoots it off the stick of Doherty. Eberhardt from the side of the net trying to go out in front there to Shaw. Eberhardt listed as a defenseman, but really plays like another forward, like having a fourth forward out on the ice with his versatility. Some 44 on 44 crime there as Oliver puts it wide of the net on the setup from McGurk. Now best from his backside in front. Oh, McGurk tried to go between the legs. And that would have brought the house town of house down, excuse me, if he had buried that one. McGurk on hat trick watch with 310 to go in the third period. Thomas Jefferson four, Hempfield two. Heron collides up high with McGurk. Schliebner retreating. Drew Schliebner, that is, under pressure from Bruno, plays this puck along the boards. And up ahead for Andrew Oliver. Oliver may be catching the Spartans in a bit of a bad change there as he puts it into the glove hand of Becker, who ushers the play along. Iceman driving the net. Iceman from the right side. Oh, in on Doherty, who makes the save from close range. Spear backpedaling now beside his goaltender. Outlets this puck a little too heavy for Caden Horton. Lance Smith, the Thomas Jefferson captain, plays this puck just in the nick of time for Mahoney. Mahoney gets tied up in his own end as Spencer puts it off the glass and back inside the Hempfield line. Caden Horton, the alternate captain of the Spartans under duress. Up for short, who sends it up to Eisenman. Eisenman couldn't handle that pass. Smith gets it back to the Hempfield blue line. Smith lifting the stick of Horton to take away that puck inside the final two minutes of regulation play. Mahoney one on three. Liam Mahoney, right circle, drifting for Sondheimer. Sondheimer above the left circle. On his backhand, crossing with Spencer. Spencer firing on goal. Same made rebound, side of the net. It's pinned up against the post, and it's underneath the left leg, I think, of Blaze Becker as he hangs on for a faceoff, and Logan Iceman furious with himself as he comes off the ice with a minute 30 to play. And Corey Myers is gonna use his timeout with time running out on the Spartans, down by two. Well, this will give us a chance to tell you that 
We've got more Class AA action coming up on Monday night, which is when our next PIHL Hockey Night Live doubleheader will take place, and we will be back at the Mount Lebanon Ice Center as the South Fayette Lions play host to the Bishop McCourt Crimson Crushers in a battle of two playoff-bound Class AA teams. And then we'll shift gears to the gold division of Class 1A as the Chartiers Valley Colts play host to the Quaker Valley Quakers. That is Bishop McCourt at South Fayette, followed by Quaker Valley at Chartiers Valley coming up this approaching Monday night, beginning just a little bit after 7 o'clock Eastern time here on 10 Band TV. Now the Jaguars here trying to nail down their sixth win in their last seven PIHL games. They've really had a strong second half of their season. The Spartans a minute 30 away from dropping six in a row in league play and being locked into that number eight spot in the Penguins Cup playoffs. Shot from above the right circle by Smith is kicked out of there by Becker. Jaguars operate in the offensive zone. Wraparound play. Becker was ready. And here comes Horton. Myers calling for his goaltender to come off. And his goaltender is limping a bit. As he thought about coming to the bench, now he's going to peel back as the Jaguars dump this puck into Hemfield ice. And now Becker will come off. Empty net down to our left in the final minute of third period play. Thomas Jefferson four, Hemfield two. Under pressure, playing this puck as Everhart. It's given away and just wide of the empty net. Lance Smith unable to hit the target. Spartans playing at a six on five advantage here, but Spencer has it for TJ, sends it to the stick of Spihar who cuts it off before it can reach the vacated goal. Final half minute of the game. Flipped up to center, gloved down by Eberhardt. Eberhardt over the blue line, has Bruno streaking down the left side. Tries to go that way, but Bruno had his stick tied up by Smith. And the Jaguars get it back to center, 18 seconds left. Off McGurk's hip. And the Spartans are just gonna run out of time here, I think, as this puck is ricocheted off the boards. Up to Bruno, Bruno to the goal, puts it off the post! And that might do it. Three seconds left. And the 2022-2023 home ice finale belongs to the Thomas Jefferson Jaguars. The Jaguars defeating the Hemfield Spartans here at the Ice Castle and Castle Shannon in a hard-fought 4-2 contest. So the Penguins Cup champs move up to fifth place, moving one rung up that Penguins Cup playoff ladder as they wrap up week 19. Hemfield is now locked into the number eight spot in the Class AA playoff bracket. Jaguars now 11 and seven on the year. They will conclude their regular season at Armstrong on February 23rd and at Butler on February 27th. Hemfield, as I said, finishes their regular campaign at home at the Kirk Nevin Arena against Franklin Regional on the 27th of February. Spartans dropping to seven wins, 11 losses now, plus one regulation tie. Thank you, as always, camera operator Michael Lyman. Thank you, as always, executive producer Todd Kazarowski. And thank you, as always, for watching and listening. Once again, your final score, Thomas Jefferson skating away victorious over Hemfield by a margin of four to two. I'm Matt Popchock, and you've been watching PIHL Hockey Night Live on 10 Band TV, presented by Weight Loss Direct.